Welcome to the 12th episode of Off the Cuff Podcast with your host, AJ Cumberout. I'm just playing. This is the Sawdust Nation <laughs> Podcast, episode 117. But we do have AJ Camarado from Crafted and yo, yo. from Crafted and NJ on board with us tonight, as well as the usual suspects, Nick from NPG Creations, myself, and Josh from North Country Woodworking. So we got the three amigos from the original crew almost here. That's it, yeah. So uh, anyway... Um, Let's jump right in. What's going on in the shop, boys? I hear you guys got some little bit under the sound a little bit under the weather. So just a little bit, just a little bit. I don't know. You want to take it, Josh? You want me to go? Yeah, go ahead, AJ. Um, you can go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So as Nick said, I'm not feeling as well as um I normally do, as you can probably hear in my voice because I have this sexy radio voice that Josh is just loving right now. This is why he wanted me on the podcast mm. tonight because he he heard me and he was like, "I need to hear this sexy voice of yours." Um, it only takes but, once. Yeah, right. And um, so yeah, the shop's been busy. You know, same old, same old. Got a lot of flags going on. I actually just got hit up by a re- uh, recurring customer, recurring customer, and uh, he wants this. <laughs> he wants a dartboard, but he wants like this elaborate thing with like columns and pillars and a uh, scoreboard and it look it if i send you the picture you're gonna be like really you're gonna make that this thing is it's gonna probably be big he still got to get me sizing on it and whatnot but it's gonna be so elaborate and he wants it very patriotic so the picture he sent me was very like coliseum ish and also patriotic so i was like you want the columns and whatnot and he's like oh yeah i want all that stuff i'm like oh god now i'm gonna be tied (laughs) up with that so it's gonna be a new venture for me i'll have to see if he's even gonna want to uh you know he knows it's gonna be pricey because of how i guess the size of it and then also the intricate work it's gonna need but um that'll be a different venture for me if that goes through and then uh just got the same old flags going on i got still orders that are um, still on the back burner a little bit, trying to get through them and, uh, just flags, 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 flags. Um, I'm also utilizing the laser a lot more and uh, I know it's told, uh, Nick, but you know, man, that, that ohm tech really is just something else that is an upgrade and a half from, you know, having, uh, the little or tour that barely could cut through, uh, some eighth inch plywood without like taking forever. I mean, I would do small things on it. It would take me hours to cut some things out. Now I'm cutting, you know, times in three minutes, five minutes, something like that. And uh, once I cut it out, then I can paint it and get it on within probably the same day. So I'm doing a lot of different logos and insignias on those. Uh, But the laser is a huge step up. And um, just, uh, you know, adding adding the logos and, and stuff to the flags really adds a different depth to them because now it's just not a flat paint you know now you can actually just you get some three-dimensional to it so it adds a little bit of character and whatnot to it and a lot of people are liking them i actually i had a u.s i actually i still have to make it but a u.s army um insignia they wanted hand painted since i had gotten the laser and now i'm getting more involved in it i asked them i was like you want me to do it like this and i showed them some other ones that I've done. And they're like, yeah, I like that a lot better. You know, that, that would make it look a a thousand times better. So I'm going to start doing that a lot more on some of these flags. But yeah, I mean, other than that, the shop is still going along. Um, I got a domino table that has been a thorn in my side that I've been making for a coworker because the, um, I don't know if you guys ever made any tables that with foldable legs, but That was a challenge in itself because I needed to make it so it could fold almost like a a dinner side table. If Mm -hmm. if you ever seen one of those, I had the concept in my head, but as soon as I put it together, the way I was making it work, it was, um, it couldn't fold a hundred percent. So then I had to watch some videos and whatnot, came up with a good idea and, um, now they fold and whatnot. So now I got to tweak those a little bit more just so it, it works at hundred percent right now. It's maybe at like 75, but that was, it was a good learning curve because, you know, I've never, never made a table or a folding table at that. And it was something that, you know, it was neat to see trial and error. You know, you, you build something from your head and go, ah, it works, but not a hundred percent. So now you have to tweak it. But, um, real funny thing. 
Um, if you ever have something that you need to not damage, don't try playing a balancing act on your hands because my uh, domino table was getting clear coated and I tried moving it and uh, I dropped it on the corner and now the corner's smashed. So now I have to, instead of having nice sharp corners on it, now I have to round over the corners a little bit to hide my mistake now. So yeah, just uh, anytime you're doing something, make sure that you have a firm grip on it because you will damage it. I always make sure to keep a firm grip. But uh, (laughs) I I don't even know why I tried starting again because I knew Nick was just going to jump in with that. So at least it wasn't a long cylindrical piece of wood because then Nick would have a grasp on it, a very firm grasp. That's exactly. He'd be all over it. He would be all I over actually, it, yes. I actually put a lot of uh, – I use mineral spirits and it helps. Okay. But- <laughs> Some insight into Nick's world, if you will. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But with that, um, I just got a couple other things going on. If you saw my reel the other day, I bought – uh, 725 feet of bubble wrap and, uh, <laughs> What's it's that a, for? <laughs> shipping. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, I didn't, I, I didn't estimate how big these freaking rolls were going to be because they were 39 inches in diameter, 48 inches tall, and it's 375 feet each. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they were massive. Get them off Uline? Uh, it came from Uline, and when the guy delivered it to my job, he he opened the door, and I said some choice words and, and laughed. And he's like, oh, you must be used to the ones that you get at Staples. I was like, kind of, yes. I was not expecting these big things. And literally, I put them in the back of my pickup and had to strap them down like they were – I keep saying it, but a a piece of heavy machinery or something like that. Literally, Mm. I had so many straps holding these things down because I couldn't fit them anywhere else. They had to go in the back. So uh, people behind me were staying a little bit far away because I guess they were afraid that they were going to fly out. (laughs) But um, yeah, that's... Worst uh, things to be hit by. Well, at least you know if one didn't fall out, it wouldn't get damaged since it's so much bubble wrap. That is very true. My luck, it would like somehow open up and then cover up a few cars and then it would create a massive pile up and I just try to keep driving into the sunset. Well, I mean, at least the cars would be okay. <laughs> Hopefully. I didn't buy the heavy duty oh, stuff. Okay. So, yeah. I've made that mistake too, but, uh, by the way. I ordered the foam, the foam wrap. Uh-huh. You know, like it's like real thin styrofoam or whatever and yeah yeah and uh i do the thing it's like six feet tall i was like the guy the guy <laughs> forgot it in the initial order with the box truck from uline uh-huh. and it was missing and my wife's like hey this guy said he's coming back after his route's over today because he forgot a piece at the warehouse i was like okay no problem thinking it's Whoa. gonna be like you know a four foot roll and this yeah. dude pulls up and this thing won't even fit through the door. It's so <laughs> fat and 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 tall. Yep. Yeah. It's That's in my crazy. storage unit. Dude, I, I, I don't have anywhere to put it. The thing was, these things were so big that I couldn't fit them anywhere. Uh, I had to leave them in my garage for a couple of days before I can unroll them because I had to split them down into two rolls. I saw you doing that on so, your reels or whatever. Yeah. Well, the problem is they're still big and I still need to break those down into two more rolls. <laughs> so in at the end of this whole thing, I'm going to have six rolls of this bubble wrap that I don't even know where I could put. I don't have a giant house. Uh, Kim goes, I guess we're just going to have bubble wrap furniture at this point because that's that's pretty much what we're going to be able to utilize them as. But for some reason, my brain did not process that how large these things were going to be. You know, you see a number, you see a picture, and you mm-hmm. go, ah, okay, you know, I'm used to my my smaller rolls that I got at Home Depot. They were 100 foot and 24 inches wide. These are 48 inches wide, so they're four foot tall, but my brain went, they're only 48 inches. I didn't put that into feet. And man, I got those suckers home, and I was like, yo, I can't believe what I did. I, I don't even know what I'm going to do with 725 feet of this stuff. I really don't. I'm not shipping out that many flags. I mean, you'll never have just to gonna buy use bubble it. wrap ever again. Dude, uh, that'll probably last me at least a few years. The, the way I'm going, I guarantee a few years I'll still have that stuff. So if, you, if you're in the market for some bubble wrap, I'll sell it to you. 
I mean, you could always list it on Marketplace too. Just, yeah, you know, but that's kind of what I was thinking as well. But I'll see because my luck, I'll sell it and then need it. So yeah, well, that's the way it works. Way. But with that, um, I'm also expanding my um, shop into my basement now. I have two benches in there now. I have two husky adjustable height tables. One's going to be used primarily for painting, um, and then also, and the main reason is so that I can paint and then go back into the shop and make a mess while the paint's drying so I don't have to keep moving mm-hmm. stuff back and forth, back and forth. How much do those cost you? The, the one, the six-footer that I'm using for painting was like uh, two ninety nine, and I had it shipped to the store for free. And then the other one was two nineteen, and that's uh, 52 inches. And that one I had shipped to my house for $8 from Home Depot. So, I mean... In theory, uh, and the and the six footer has two drawers. When you if you're ever in the market for those husky tables, also look at the color because they have a black version and a white version. Sometimes the black version is like fifty to seventy five dollars more for absolutely no reason. It's the same exact table, same exact size, two drawers, and it's fifty dollars more. And I'm like, that's almost like our dust collection. How mine was. The same price as yours, but it was white because, and then it was cheaper than yep. the green. And yeah. So uh, I was going a little bit of back and forth, you know, trying to figure out because I, I mean, I don't care what color they were. They could have been black or white, really didn't matter to me. And um, it's not like I had to stick to a color scheme. So I went with the white ones because they were cheaper. It was the same exact table and it still had the height adjustability. Um, it also comes with four wheels, lock and casters if you need. Um, Mm -hmm. but for the six footer, I kept it on the regular feet that it has. The other one I made mobile so that I can move it out and be able to package on it. Because the thing that I'm running into is I'm packaging my flags on the floor or on my table Mm -hmm. saw, and it becomes a real pain. Mm -hmm. So if I can have a bench that I could walk all the way around, it makes it just that much easier to package something up. So hopefully all that'll work out. I got to put some lighting and some shelving in there, but it's working out. I'm painting a couple things here and there on it so far. Um, it's different. You know, it's a different space for me to paint, but um, it's it's nice. Now all my stuff can stay right there when I can make a mess in the other room. More flat surfaces for more junk is, to pile up on. Is your basement attached to your garage? Everything's attached to everything, so yeah. Walk, it's all within the house. Go- well, yeah, but I mean, can you walk from your basement directly into your garage or do you have to? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's nice. I literally walk down my stairs from my main living room. And I walk into the basement where the, um, it's a finished basement where my painting area is now. And if I hook a right, I go into the back room where the CNC and the laser are. And then if I walk out a door, I'm into the garage. Ah, so it's nice all contained. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I know we talked about this on... A, a way previous episode but like if you could have a big shop like how would you make it would you have it attached or detached i i always wanted an attached garage only because i don't want to walk outside at night especially with the bears around here and whatnot i like having it all in one spot i i feel the same way um my wife is at her wits end with me though because i commandeered the dining room <laughs> So, <laughs> i'll be there soon well i mean we don't really use the dining room we have a large um it, it's like a large island in the kitchen so mm-hmm. we pretty much eat dinner at the island because it's so bit it's freaking massive but yeah um, but when we have company and stuff like that i'll clean up the dining room and i'll move all my stuff into the garage and then i'll move it back the next day <laughs> well it, i don't really move yeah, it yeah. all back i move it back little bits at a time that i need and then it all ends up back mm-hmm. there. You know, the biggest thing was I had flags all in our living room because I would paint on our ottoman and I'd have, you know, at least three or four flags at a clip and they're just getting in the way and whatnot. And then finally I was like, we're not using the basement for anything. And even if when when we have kids and they want to use the basement, it's not like I took over the whole thing. You know, I'm against one wall and whatnot. So I was like, let me just do this. You know, I had the money. I said, screw it. Let me just buy them now and get it done and over with. Buy one, buy once, cry once. And that's kind of what we want to do, AJ. Here is I got my computer desk, my recording desk. This is kind of like the work area, but we want to put a where the gold forge used to be an additional desk for like painting and yeah. like stuff I like doing in here because I can also do stuff out there. And the wife's getting into a lot of this, so 
if we can have another two desks basically side to side and we have these work surfaces, we can keep our table clear. Yeah. That, that poor table <laughs> before this all started was halfway decent. Now there's like super glue on there at the scrape up, uh, paint marks we wash up. I mean, like it, it's taken the beating. Yeah. I so hear you. those desks sound like something we might take a look at. You know, and they're 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 only twenty four inches wide, or I'm sorry, twenty four inches deep, and then you can get them in a range of different sizes. And the other thing that you want to look for as well that I noticed is I was going to get a four foot version, that was more expensive than the fifty two inch version. So yeah. I was like, well, I mean, I can get a slightly larger one; it'll fit in the spot that I need. I wasn't dead set on four foot. But if you are, then you're going to spend a little bit more. But it's weird they're pricing. You would almost think that they would go up in pricing as the sizes would increase. But it's a little demand. I guess so. I guess the forefoots are in high demand. But sometimes you can find, I think it's the 52 inch in stock at your local Home Depot. But the two that I wanted, they weren't in stock there. I had to get them shipped. But there's a, uh, but with that, there's a store yeah. here that, that buys stuff from Home Depot. Um, in shipping containers. So it's like overstock really? overstock. And uh yeah, you can go up there and and haggle. So I've seen those those you know, the benches you're talking about, and um mm-hmm. they were like anywhere from like forty percent off of regular regular wow. price. Um I didn't need one, of course, but uh the guy was trying to sell me them because I was looking for um I was looking for husky a husky toolbox uh the husky toolbox is is kind of like actually all their products so far i'm very impressed with um i would fit in most of my shop is has husky you know up mm-hmm. there right now and the quality uh, with their toolboxes are just amazing uh, soft clothes i mean and in the scheme of things like some of these toolboxes are not that expensive for what you get with them the yeah. large one has a, a power strip to it mm-hmm. i mean like and it was the same thing. I got a little bit shorter. I think it was like four inches shorter. And I, I saved 150 bucks mm-hmm. on the toolbox. So, I mean, like, it's a good brand if you're looking to get, you know, a shop outfitted for toolboxes, tables, stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the Husky brand. I mean, we got a couple guys at our own job, you know, rocking the Husky toolboxes. And they're they're solid boxes. They're just not as deep um, as... as um as like your snap-ons and stuff like that, but well, yeah. yeah, of course they're not. But you're not paying snap-on prices either. That's true. You could actually buy two Husky toolboxes, back them up next to each other, or three. Yeah, yeah you could probably for the amount of money I spent on my box at the very end, you could have probably bought at least ten. Yeah, I, or I've more. seen your monster at, at work, dude. That thing's a freaking. It's like a whole trailer. It's no longer mine. Oh, really? oh yeah, you it's sold no it. longer mine. Yeah, you I sold, sold that. that. Now I'm now I'm back working out. I, it's actually funny. It was like a circle of life at our job because I got rid of my toolbox and then went right back into the one I started with. And it was my father's old toolbox. So now I'm back into that. But anyway, those Husky boxes, yes, they're, they're, the quality has come up since I remember them back years ago. They were just junk. They were You mm-hmm. bought Husky and people looked at you like, really? You want, you want to go with that thing? But I mean, the tables, they're solid. I, I mean, they're solid maple tops. Um, you know, they're all pieced together with like, uh, what are those finger joints or something? I, yeah. It's, it's so I mean, finger joints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, the new top I got has curl in it. So Ooh. I'm I'm good with that. It's got some nice curl. Um, and they're, they do come pre-finished. So they have a slick surface on them. So really anything that's going to stick to them is going to come right off. Um, but I guess if you ever needed to refinish it, you could always just sand them down and then refinish. But I mean, the top is it's solid. It's not a piece of like, um, veneered MDF or anything like that. They do have the melamine, uh, mm-hmm. like you can iron on, on Amazon. Mm-hmm. It's fairly cheap. And that's what I put on top of mine because I use it like Alfie table painting, whatever. And yep. it helps keep, you know, obviously that surface is real slick, real clean. It lasts longer. Oh yeah. I, I, I want to do melamine to the, t- uh, whatever I do to the outfeed table, eventually I want to do melamine so that I can actually glue up without having to worry about the glue sticking. Cause I have bare too. Yeah. I I've, I've seen that literally people just touch it and it pops right off, but yeah. eventually I'm going to, uh, I, I want to tweak my, uh, 
outfeed table around and I might use those those husky tables. The problem is there's no under bench storage. So that's my only that's the only downfall for me. Cuz in the shop I have a lot of stuff on that bottom of that outfeed table. I could always come up with something, but maybe that'll be for down the road, but that's really all I got going on in my shop. With that, I'm going to throw it over to you, Josh, because you're looking mighty fine over there. Well, thank you. Uh, must be the radio voice I got going on. You were actually frozen, so I, I didn't know if you were still with us or not, so I was taking That's my chances. No, sir. That was me holding still. Ah. <laughs> um, well, shop-wise, it's going to be kind of slow. Um, I got back from my uh, fishing trip, and, well, um, I had this cough. I don't know if you guys have uh, heard it or not, but um, so – I you know, I've got some jobs in the works, um, working on final details with some invoices out. Um, nothing's due right away, thankfully. Um, so I can kind of heal up from whatever I got going on now. Um, we're actually recording on Wednesday, not a Tuesday because of me. I was, uh, at the docks trying to get it looked at and, uh, yeah, so that's all fun. Trying to get over this and, uh, move on and get back in the shop. As far as like uh, how the shop has been, well, it's been silent in there for the most part. Nothing much going on. I've been doing a lot more 3D printing, just household stuff, trying to get um, things made to make life easier. Um, I did get uh, my bow up and running, and I got a target and all that stuff. And nice. I did a couple, you know, practices with that and doing fairly good. Um, getting closer to my goal of maybe using it next year in real hunting. Um, is it a crossbow or a regular like wooden bow it's a uh, compound bow it's a matthews 2010 um it's a it's a pretty nice bow um i was graciously given to my by my uncle nice and uh i took it up and started using it yeah a crossbow is the one that looks like it it has like a pistol grip on it right i think yeah, you you pull it back and basically you're, there's a trigger okay. versus pulling it back and holding it yep. and then letting go with a. I was uh, thinking about a or, compound in my head, but for some reason I said crossbow. That's cool though. Well, crossbow's the new toy or the new thing out there right now for uh, for most hunting. But hmm. um, yeah, but I mean, as far as the shop goes, like I treat, I keep trying to go back to that. I have some things that I, I've mentioned here before. I've been designing since I can't really be in the shop because I don't want to be around any dust particles right now, especially when I'm having coughing lung issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm designing a lot. So I got a lot of things that I've been in talks with on the podcast and other people that I'm designing, trying to get done. And uh, that way, when I get to go back in there, I can, you know, knock some of the stuff out. It's, you know, I'll make it easier on myself. Um, but like I said before, most of the projects I have going, um, which ain't many, um, ain't due until like uh, end of October, November time frame. So I got time to kind of thankfully heal up. Um, but that being said, I'm also trying to uh, come up with, and AJ and I were talking kind of about this before uh, we got on here, about things I want to just stock up on. Um, with things being as slow as they are, um, it's a good time for me to stock up on some of the, uh, maybe cutting boards and some other items. Um, and that's one of the reasons the design process I'm doing now is so important because I'm doing things with, um, light burn and easel and other programs that I haven't really messed around with too much. So I'm figuring a lot out and design is a good portion of what we do. So I'm hoping to offer some better products at the end of this. Um, so, you know, just trying to take what I can and make it better um, situational wise. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's about it for me. Um, most of it's 3d printing and designing and uh, getting th- some stuff knocked out, hoping to secure a actual project tonight. I'm talking to someone on uh, Etsy. They're wanting a pretty cool plaque and I would love to do it for them. Nice. But uh yeah, um, job wise, got nothing to do. Nothing's really in the makes uh, making right now. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last podcast to stop me if I did, uh, but I did a spice rack and it was missized uh, because apparently housing has a new stove they're giving out. So I did go over there and I got the new size 
And I, I made one based on the measurements the client provided. And uh, it fit pretty well. They just need me to trim up um, a little bit of it. Excuse me. I need me to trim up a little piece uh, to make it just a little bit smaller because I made it uh, about an inch too high. And I'm going to take about a quarter inch off to kind of give it the look they want. And then I'll stain it and get it out to them. Um, he's a pretty good standing before I do that. And then uh, I guess with that, they gave me something to get from Hobby Lobby. They had a, um, like I don't want to say shadow box, but they had a picture frame mm-hmm. with a diploma and um, like a diploma uh, coin they got, achievement or something. Nice. And what they did is they took, um, well, they took some board. They cut it out, looked at, make it look nice and fancy. They put this stuff in. They taped the back of it. And then they put paper on the back of the frame and it literally fell out like four or five times. Um, They brought it back to Hobby Lobby and eventually gave up and they moved. And then they sought me out. I'll be fixing that for them. I'll be taking some plywood, either uh, probably a quarter, probably quarter inch or eighth inch plywood and putting it there. I'll glue on the, the pieces on the uh, plywood with the uh, board that way it's a lot firmer Mm -hmm. and I'll place it into the frame and uh, I'll paint the back black. So it looks nice and uh, we'll put it together that way. So that hopefully it'll never happen again. Um, I I can't believe like I've never ordered anything from Hobby Lobby like this, but I have heard it costs quite a bit and what they got was just Chinese crap, dude. (laughs) Yeah. It was, it's bad. Like the frame looks nice. It's not the frame. It, it's literally what they threw together. And I feel really bad just like, cause this is an achievement. You know what I'm saying? This was someone's diploma. They obviously got, you know, some merits of some sort mm-hmm. and uh, they deserve to be recognized for it and be able to hang that in their house. And it was just crap. Yeah. So I'm going to fix that up for them. I'm not going to charge them too much for it um, because it's really a piece of plywood and some glue. Yep. Um, but yeah. But that's that. That's honestly about it, what's going on in the shop. Um, hopefully, I can share some of those designs with everyone here soon. Um, I want to carve them out and laser some stuff before I get that uh, out there. So the reels will be sparking back up as soon as I get out there. But right now, I could just basically take pictures of empty shop. That's about it. Yeah, so, I hear you. Um, but with that, I know uh, well, one of us has been jobbing. In fact, I believe he has something that needs to be out by Friday. So yeah, let's I go gotta, ahead and toss it to Nick. I got to – it's a guide on – it's like a flag. It's it's on a pole, a stick. For those of you who don't know what a guide on is, it's a, it's a flag that's on a stick. And they want, they want it mounted to a piece of oak uh, with like removable mounts so you can pull it out, you know. Mm-hmm. But they want the guide on cut down, so I gotta cut this guide down. Got guide on. I gotta cut this guide on down, cut it in half, and there's a bottom piece that's chrome that's gotta go on the end, and so I have to whittle. I have to do some whittling, and uh, whittle down the end. Um, probably gonna use a, a chisel or something like that and work work it, and uh, shove that chrome piece on it. And there's a pin that goes through it. You drill a hole, and that pin goes in there, and it holds it to the the end of the guide on. Other than that, though, huh. uh, I just finished a plaque today, 100% done, wrapping it up tonight, sending it out in the morning. Uh, it's on my Instagram reels. I just released it. It's all acrylic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've literally been so darn busy. Uh, I haven't taken too many orders as of late. I have a bunch of orders I need to get out before, like, the second week in October. Um, I'm working on two American flag shadow boxes, uh, another retirement shadow box. That's like, just like a generic shadow box. Uh, I've got to do, uh, a master sergeant Chevron shadow box that has like a, a air airman wings that are attached to it on the side mm-hmm. with a, like where the, where the, at least where our, uh, our rank insignia is where the, the star is on it. It's going to be a circular shadow box for small stuff. It's going to be weird. It's like different. Um, 
my neighbor brought over some floating shelves. She was like, I've got these wooden floating shelves. I just need you to fix them because they don't, they, <laughs> they come away from the wall with the current hardware. I'm like, okay, I'll take a look. So I get them. It's all MDF with a veneer on top. I was like, there's nothing I can do with this. I'm, I mean, aside from like, I guess filling the inside of that veneer or that uh, MDF box with foam and drilling it out, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So. Yeah, said, right. if you want shelves, I can price you out some shelves. So I did. I did price out some shelves. Uh, total price came to like four hundred dollars for like, like I think it was like six shelves. Um, and they're like, "Yeah, no, we're good." I'm like, "I, I got, I kind of figured, you know, like." Yeah, <laughs> I've done that for floating shelves. I had a client con- uh, contact me. They're like, "We're about to go to a box store and." you know, get some floating shelves. But I want to know what your price was. I'm like 300 bucks. It was a couple, it was like a couple of very long floating shelves. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and she's like, yeah, I don't think my husband's going to go for that after he saw the price in the box store. Yeah. yeah no. And I'm like, oh, so I, I did, I did right. a workup for him. I did a, a quote or an estimate for him um, with current prices of like the cheapest wood at an eight, eight quarter at the, the box store. I don't mind doing that, you know? <laughs> Uh, or not the box store at the the lumber yard, um, and then they were like, "Oh, can we add? <laughs> so, can we please add some octagon shelves?" I'm like, "Yeah, like you know, how deep do you want them, and how many do you want, and you know, what size are you looking at?" So I did uh, a quote for six of those, and you know, price just skyrockets <laughs> once you start adding up materials and labor and time and all that stuff. And they're like, "Oh, yeah, yeah we're we're just gonna order from IKEA. Okay, no problem." <sighs> That kind of saves me. I mean, although it would be not a tough job, uh, I do believe that uh, I I can't have the bandwidth to to handle that at the moment. So, yeah. But I have all. So, the, I did accept a job from another neighbor who was like, "Can you build me a coffee table?" Okay, <sighs> bro. I have so much eight quarter ash stacked underneath the CNC machine right now. I had to cut it into cut it in just. Uh, just above the dimensions that I needed for the for my cut list, because I still have to square it up. I have to, you know, it's mm-hmm. rough rough cut lumber, so I have to square it up and get it jointed and planed, and then. Um, mm-hmm. But it's going to be, it's, it's really a weird design. It's like a, a rectangle, but I don't know. Standing up, the inside is hollow, so you have. Huh. One, two, three, four sides to it. Okay. It's, it's just going to be like a... Uh, it's going to be like a rectangular tube? Yeah, rectangular tube. There so, you go. Uh, but uh, I, they're like, they wanted me... Then they're like, oh, yeah, can you, can you match the stain for our other furniture? I was like, I'll tell you what I will do. I was like, you go find the stain you want on it, and I will make sure it gets on there. Why you don't want to stain it a color that they that they approve and then it's not right once they get it into their house? Uh, yeah, so they want something to match their their current furniture. And I was like, here is some scrap. Um, <laughs> here's some scrap. Take it with you. Uh, if you want to run tests on some stain, go for it. But yeah. I'm not going to be the one to do. I'm for one, I'm colorblind. For two, um, that wasn't built into the price. So the price is me just constructing it and yep. putting an oil finish on it. Um. So the oil would cost a heck of a lot less than me going to the store, buying a bunch of stain and trying to match it. So, yeah. Yeah. When something like that, I always in my invoices say I'll match as close as possible, but that's, I don't it. even like doing um, that. I never say I'm going to match completely. I just have that. I, I don't like doing it, own, but it's happened. Put the onus on them, man. Hey, you find the stain, bring it to me and just give them like a, uh, a couple different brands of stain or a couple different like is it make sure it's like either water based or oil based or whatever and yeah like hey you bring it to me and i will make sure it gets done um obviously f- better for a fee better yet i ha- i had a client send me a picture of a table and they're like we want to match this this uh stain and looking at it it was burnt like you could tell when someone burns it, you have those spaces mm-hmm. where the the flame didn't you know hit properly or whatever, and you could just tell it was burnt and then finished on top. And I'm like, well, yeah, I could definitely match that. You know, it's it's burnt on there, and I could do that for you. And they're like, oh, we don't want burnt; we want a stain to kind of match that. I'm like, well, 
I can't make it look like that. But what I'll do about burning it, but I will get you a dark stain that will be close to that. So I went with like, um, was it ebony? It was like, uh, like a dark, a dark walnut. Yep. Um, or what's the one that starts with a K? Uh, oh, can't think of it now. Kona. Yeah, I think it was Kuna. Was it Kuna or Koba or something like mm-hmm. that? Anyway, dark stain, like dark brown stain. Yep. And you know what? They loved it. I so. don't want Bye. anything to do with having to refinish something. So yeah, that th- this is I'm mitigating my like I'm not set up to do that. I can't. I can't. I could put stain on something, which I absolutely detest putting stain on stuff because I like the natural wood with oil on it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, but. If you want me to stain it, fine, dude. I'll stain it. If you pick the stain out and bring it to me, I will make sure to get that exact stain. Or I, you know, you could bring me the bottle or the the jug of stain, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I am not set up to do this. Where oh, we don't like the color. We want it refinished with a different stain. Sorry, man. Can't handle that right now. I don't have the space. I don't have the for, for that coffee table is going to be the only thing I'm working on because it's going to be so big and the size. Yeah, of it, yeah. my shop's a two car garage with a pack full of stuff right now. You know. Yeah. Now, if you were to do the coffee table with natural wood, you know, with of oil finish, and then they said, "I want you to put this stain on." They hand you the stain, and would would you upcharge because now you're staining? Or would you just keep it the same because you're, st- you're still just finishing it? No, I mean, if I already put oil on there, then I got to sand it down. No, I'm saying, it, I'm I'm sorry. If, Prior. if you if you said, here's my normal, I'm going to make it, I'm going to put an oil-based, uh, you know, my oil on it. And they said, no, we want it stained, but we're going to give you the stain. You'll charge for staining it? I'll charge for the the act of staining like the okay the, that, yeah, for, that's what for the asking. time it takes me to do it i'm not gonna charge mm-hmm. them for the stain that they already bought you know what i mean no 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 <laughs> I, I was just wondering if you were gonna charge more because um of the act of staining that that's all no so i told them that i would put an oil finish on it so uh mm-hmm. i probably i probably won't tra- if if anything because you're gonna you might have to do like depending on how the stain is and how the wood yep. reacts to it um if you might have to do two coats, you might have to do three coats to get the darkness because you get the color. Yeah, you got to get yeah. you, and you got to make it consistent, and that's the tough part when you're going over large surfaces. If you yeah, know, have you ever spilled stain on a piece of wood, and then the rest of the wood, mm-hmm. you rub it, rub it in, and you're like, oh shit, it looks like it looks like the stain spilled on here because it's darker in this area. Now you got to match yep. everything. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to charge me. They're my neighbor. I'm trying to help them out. They were looking at uh, Wayfair at these mm-hmm. uh, at these coffee tables, and I was telling them like, "Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I will not do that." You know, this is you know, there's just things that I won't tackle at the moment because I don't have time. So, yeah, just different different designs I, that I will like would be like you need at least six months lead time on something like that. I, I gave them like a a twelve week lead time on yeah. Like I will start in three months, but I will have the materials, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So anyway, other than that though, um, no, I'm still on halt with the CNC build. Uh, it's, it's almost done. It's like, it's a sea hair away of be it from being, from being ready to go. I just need to, um, I just need to get some MDF for the, for the actual work surface. And then, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hook up the rest of the power or hook up the rest of the wires, which it's avid's really easy. So it's all plug and play. It's not like I have to do any wiring, which is kind of nice because it's nice. Yeah. I mean like it's literally you plug it into this, the, the box under like the X wire, like for the X axis goes right into the X like plug. So good to go. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I, I'm really not. I don't know. Past couple of days have kind of. Yesterday kind of got shot since we were st- supposed to do the podcast, and I was up here. I did an Instagram live just so I could get some of the members who are patron members. Um, I knew they would be looking where we're at, so um, they all pretty much showed up. 
and explain the situation. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, I did okay. forget. I ran out of adhesive in the middle of a project because I. Nice. Yeah, that's right. So I was I was putting this plaque together. It was Sunday, and I have this big roll. Well, it used to be big. It's empty now. It's a roll of uh, what do you got? Three M at three hundred SLE or LSE tape, double sided yes. tape, and uh, I I was like, oh man, the roll still has like a, f- a few different, you know, a, f- a few. Uh, wraparounds of the material so i'm good nope that roll is like a quarter inch thick uh wow so it i thought what well, like you know you pick it up it's still heavy because of the cardboard mm-hmm. tube that it's on i was like man i really screwed the pooch on this so i ordered last minute i amazon myself some of the um the squares uh, oh okay and uh that got me through but i do have to place another order for that a lot of the large order I, I want to say maybe last time I was on with you guys, I had asked about adhesive for um, laser projects. Like when you cut certain things mm-hmm. out, like I did a layered project and I had to use some star bond on it, but I could see the star bond. It would, it would uh, like spill out and whatnot. And then I can't remember if it was Nick or Nap had said the adhesive backed stuff that you'd put on the plywood. Um, is that what you're talking about, Nick? Yeah, it's, it's, Look up. Uh, let me let me let me find it. I, it's my last thing I ordered on Amazon. It's, it's called. Um, if you're not if you're not using it all the time, you can you can use uh, you can buy it on Amazon. And I paid like fifty mm-hmm. bucks for um, ten square foot of it. But it's uh, okay. It's called three M, uh, three hundred LSE tape, super strong, double sided adhesive. It works great. Now, man, I'm telling you, it, what, you just apply it to the whole sheet of ply, and then cut your piece out, and then just because, like, I guess you have a lot of waste as well because when you put it on, and then whatever pieces fall out or whatnot that's not being cut, it's going to be y- y- yes, Josh. It's true. You might have some waste, but uh, Nick and I both do this. We we're just talking about this before you joined us uh, tonight is you take the smaller pieces and you try to, you know, inc- or cut out smaller pieces on those. Okay. And you just you maintain that to try to get as much out of it as you can. Cuz that stuff is a little bit pricey, but I'm telling you is 100% worth it. Especially messing with a lot of small pieces like that. Yep. It, it saves so much time and energy that like you don't have to mess with glue. But once you stick it down, yeah, it's, it's stuck. not coming back. Yeah, I so I use yeah, it primarily like, on acrylic. I don't use it on wood much. Um, okay. When I'm gluing wood to wood, I'll just use the um, – yeah, I'll, I'll use the glue. Because I, I, I did pick this up. I picked it up in the sheets and I still have yet to use it. But it would – this one that I cut out was I think like a five-layered flag and with an eagle. And there was such little fine detail – that that stuff would probably work out really well, but it's not super thick. I know that. Now, when you cut, um, do you have to do any secondary passes or anything like that? Or you cut right through your material and then that stuff, and you don't even notice yeah. that it's there? Uh, yeah. Depending on – okay, so depending on how – what power you use on the laser, mm-hmm. right? You might have to do a secondary cut because it is it is tough stuff. So when I had the 60 watt laser, I would have to do extra passes because it'd have to cut through the acrylic and then that. Okay. But since now I'm, I have an upgraded laser, I'm sure your laser will be fine. You have the 80 watts, so that'll go right yeah. through one pass. Yeah, I don't have any issues like that. Okay. I've never had to do double cuts with that stuff, especially even with acrylic. It goes right through both. But to be fair, I've never not used acryl- acrylic without that. So when I did my base settings – I already had that a part of that uh, for, you know, calculation. Mm -hmm. So like I never really, you know, the only acrylic I don't cut with it is the clear stuff I use for my shadow box. Okay. That's pretty good. I still have yet to use it. I'm I'm curious on how well it works. It works fantastic, man. Um, Okay. And like Josh said before, make sure you stick it right the first time because if you stick it wrong, (laughs) you're going to destroy your piece. 
Um, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you like, I've done that it's, before where I've I actually dropped something and it stuck, and I was like, "Son of a!" Ooh. Now I got to recut everything because I can't peel this off. It's going to crack the acrylic and break it. Oh, jeez. So there's just a. I did some testing because Nick turned me on to this stuff. He's the one that found it. He bought this like I don't know crazy amount, and he's like, "You need to try it." So. I started doing some acrylic projects, and before I did my first one, I took some and I tested it on a piece of wood, and I dipped it in water. I di- I put uh, oil on it afterwards. You know, I just did some testing to make sure that's going to hold up to everything it needs to. Mm-hmm. And I can't get that stuff off. Wow! And yeah. like like Nick said, you're going to either break the some wood off with it, or you're breaking the acrylic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually, I'm some good stuff. The adhesive on that that particular tape, the 300 is Mm -hmm. um specifically designed for plastics it doesn't feel it doesn't fuse the plastics but it it it's damn near close to where it's almost it's almost impossible to peel it apart after you get put it on there so okay well good to know i i definitely gotta try it out i i have it i have it sitting downstairs and i kept saying i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it and just never did. Dude, it'll add a complete new dynamic to your your uh, projects. If you put, even if you put, uh, say you have like a piece of black acrylic or something like that, and mm-hmm. you write, and you have a name tape, or, or, or I have this, uh, um, it's a veneer. It's like an aluminum veneer that I ordered from JDS mm-hmm. Industries. Mm-hmm. I put that on a piece of black acrylic. I will cut that out. Uh, I'll offset like a nameplate. And I'll mm. I'll cut out the the um it looks like stainless. I'll cut out the square and offset just by like maybe a eighth inch, and then I'll stick the nameplate on top of it, and it makes that nameplate pop. So, mm. okay, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the best part about if you're using acrylic, you can use excuse me if you get fingerprints and stuff gets icky on it, just use rubbing uh-huh. alcohol, cleans it right up. Yep, good to know. Mm-hmm. That's why I like it. Still. And you know what? You don't have to worry about painting. Dude. Painting. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to get away from is no painting. And, and I love the look of a croak. It looks so clean. I Check out Nick's latest uh, reel. And you're going to be hearing this tomorrow. But check out his last couple. He's been making some amazing stuff with acrylic. It just makes, I, I think, the more professional piece. I never Ooh, I man. never would have cool. expected to have such clean looking pieces um, if this was over. I don't know. So like, say like. When I was just got here, I would have never, I would have never expected that my pieces would be looking this clean with like the sharpness of the color. Talking about clean pieces, sublimation. Have you done any more work with that? I know you got the stuff. No, for- I have not. I need to get a different heat press because mine, mine folds down. I need one that cl- clamps down straight down, and then you can lift it straight up, mm-hmm. and then it, it pushes over to the side. Do you know who's really good at sub- sublimating? Graham from Graham's Custom Designs. This dude is go. That's all he does is he he sublimates like ply, plywood, uh-huh. like Baltic mm-hmm. birch. Lasers out shape, sublimates on it. <laughs> then he uh, then he pours epoxy over it, and it looks gorgeous. Dude, check out his. Yes, stuff. that dude makes some. That dude makes some seriously formidable plaques. I would like to know what is oh, sublimated or not. Um, typically you're going to see all like the, the pictures with all the detail. Like he's got Marine Corps Eagle globe and anchors. He's got lo- small, mm-hmm. small logos and stuff. That's all printed out on sublimation printers. Uh, I, I need to really, I, I really believe I need to invest in something like this and learn it because this would be perfect for what you do. Yeah. Laser it out. And then you sublimate the picture on there so you don't have to paint. And it would only speed up your production, but make, I mean, your painting now is amazing. Like I, I almost would say about the same, but it would give you faster production rates. Oh, hell yeah. I, I'm doing this one coin that it's for a fire department. I had to do it twice already. Well, once before. And there's so much detail in there that I wish I could capture, but I, I physically just cannot. I try my best. But I need to. I really need to invest in something like this. And the, I I watched some videos and and the sublimation onto ply gives it like this grainy look. His stuff looks like a, like it's crystal clear. 
Yeah, it sure does. It could be because of the epoxy, but I don't know enough about it to tell you what it is or if it does something different. Or I'm sure there's different levels. You know, like anything, if you buy once and cry once, you're going to get amazing products like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, uh, I'm I'm looking now at his stuff, and I, I I'm seeing you know the some of the eagles that he does. It, I'm guessing that's sublimated because there's such fine detail mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. I guess like the even the Uno card that he did that I guess is sublimated. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Oh yeah. That definitely is the the whole e- eagle and globe, yeah, right? Yeah, it's got to be. There's no way. He, I mean, like I don't think he he did not paint that. It's, yeah. It's no. It, definitely not painted. Definitely not. So uh, that's still something I want to pursue someday. I have the I have half the equipment now since I have the sublimation mm-hmm. printer, and I have all the paper and stuff like that it just oh you know what i'll tell you what so i know there's a little trick to it though so if you paint the plywood white okay i think it's like a uh uh i don't know if it's gloss or matte white but if you paint it white then you put the sublimation paper that's printed on on top of it and then you put the uh it's called um butcher paper on top of that and then pr- and then mm-hmm. press it for However many, like, I guess everybody's heat press is different, but you have to like set it at a specific temperature and you typically leave it for a set amount of time. It puts that image right onto that white backed, um, Hmm. that white painted, um, plywood. Me and Nap messed around with it and Nap, Nap did pretty good for the first couple tries. It wasn't like perfected by any means, but we were, we were starting to, to see good results. Uh, and, and potential you know what i mean i definitely would like to get it in my shop just because like those small details like aj was hitting on yeah like there's no way you know i think the times of me sitting for three four hours at, at night at four o'clock in the morning painting i'm hopefully done with that oh yeah <laughs> sublimation yeah. just be so dude i easier. haven't painted you know how i used to paint flags yeah never i haven't yeah. painted a flag in over a year over a year and a half maybe i don't know i don't no way people ask for a painted flag i'll say but I can do this. And they're like, oh, cool. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll do the, the acrylic one. Okay, cool. That saves me time. You, and I can charge you more. Know, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, the only thing that I, I want to – if I was ever get into sublimation, I, I would want it to look, you know, clean. I wouldn't want it to look like a decal. And that's – that's the only thing I pride myself on is that the hand-paintedness of it is like, you know, it, it's hand-done. And then – even though you're still using your hand and your brain to make the sublimation, it kind of takes all that like handmade aspect out of it. So check this out though. Look at all of his work, all of Graham's work. It's gorgeous. He throws epoxy on top of it overnight and it gives it a clean, gorgeous luster with, Oh yeah. It doesn't look like a sticker, you know? No, it, it really doesn't. So, I'm gonna to have to reach out I mean, to him and see if uh, he's he's willing to lend a helping hand and just explaining it. Well, he's a good dude, and I don't foresee him turning you down because I know for a fact I've talked to him a few times about it when I first purchased all my stuff, and then I just mm-hmm. I just hadn't done it. So, but he he when he started getting into it, once he's once he picked it up, dude, it, it's just like his stuff, his quality of his work just skyrocketed. So. Oh yeah, I I would love to. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, and I don't know if you want to divulge this information on the uh, the podcast, but the stuff you have currently in your shop, Nick, the uh, the for the sublimation, what, how much was that running? You like a couple hundred? No, so the printer was like three fifty. The pre, well, I, th- I think it was like three fifty or four hundred for the printer. It's just a okay. regular Epson printer, but you you have to. It's really weird. So the the uh, you know how you pour ink into the reservoirs uh-huh. through the, you have to get sublimation ink and okay. you have to open up the, like a, a stock, the stock version of the ink dispenser uh-huh. because it's proprietary for the Epson. I don't know for other printers, but I had to, I did this outside. I, I dumped out all the regular ink, washed out the tubes 
and then I poured the sublimation ink in and then I could put it into the printer. But I did that before okay. I ever loaded the printer with any ink. So the only thing my printer's ever seen is sublimation ink. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and That's not the press bad. can be anywhere from like 150 to like 300 bucks, just depending on what which one you get. And then the paper, yeah, yeah. all the paper and stuff like that. So it's probably going to run you anywhere from like 600 to $1,000 just to figure out where you want to how you're going to do it. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. you got to do tests. You got to see what works for you. There's videos on YouTube that you can watch. And I, I was watching videos like a madman trying to, trying to find my happy medium. Turns out if you find <laughs> it makes sense, but if you find any videos, cause I've searched, but I've seen a lot of like DIY things, nothing like with the detail like a, a detailed picture. I've seen ones that were like a farmhouse truck or a picture of a pumpkin on a piece of, you know, like regular little wood that the woman was doing, but I couldn't find anything of like substance on sublimation. Uh, I mean, it works for everything. You know what I mean? Whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever you print out is going to be sublimated. You just have to figure out the settings and the, the, the okay. The heat level, the duration of the time you're going to heat it for, and um, your prep. It, a lot of it goes in okay. is into prep. Like I said, you have to. Uh, I think Nap was saying he painted plywood white, and then he put gloss clear coat on it, and then he sublimated oh, it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, it it all has. I mean, it could take a full day before you can even sublimate that piece of wood because everything has to dry before you even put it put it in there still faster than painting yeah and i'm sure people listening to this if you have more info hit us up i actually have a co-worker that wants to get into it um he's actually making shirts and stuff now and he's screen printing but wants to get into sublimation because it's so much easier wow but uh actually his screen printing he made these shirts for me nice um and they're the best ones i've had so far so but going back to what i was going to say earlier is are you using Halcyon to uh, coat your flags, finish your flags? Not or, all of them, no. Are you using something else? Well, regardless, from what I see on Instagram, I think that if you did sublimation on your stuff and finish like you normally do, mm-hmm. it would give that clear coat. Because, I mean, like what you're, what you're currently doing is making your flags look – they have that gloss to them, and it looks – you know, really fresh and clean. So I think it would just be a normal process for you. Okay. Uh, I, I got to, I got to toy around with the idea. Cause I, it's, there's two things that I want to get eventually is the sublimation and then a vinyl cutter because oh, yeah. I want to, I, I got a guy not far from me who does all my vinyls. So like the cornhole boards that I just did, he, he did those vinyls for me, but now I got to wait for him to get them. And the last time, uh, something happened to his machine. He was waiting on a part. The part got delayed. So there was a whole thing behind it. And I'm like, if I could cut my own vinyls, I could cut the whole middleman out and then I could do it myself. And sell your own yeah, to other people. That is very true. I didn't even think about that. But it, it's like, do I want to invest in a vinyl cutter or do I want to invest in a sublimation? It's, I think my primary would probably be sublimation right now because the flags are still you know, working. I, I would love to do them all on the the laser, all the badges and stuff like that. But that's a lot more work than doing, I think, a sublimation, especially if you get the sublimation down pat. So I'm going to have to look into that mm-hmm. more. Honestly, go with sublimation. Yeah. And then when, you know, that makes you enough to pay you back, go with the vinyl. Yeah. I like to get vinyl in here too. Because think about it. With vinyl, you can do boards. You can do decals for trucks. You can do... <laughs> You could do pretty much anything yeah. that you want, and you don't have to reach out to anyone. You don't have to wait. If someone wants a special design on a board, you just design it yourself. Yeah. There's no there's no middleman, like you said. Matt Voltner, mm-hmm. I think he has a vinyl cutter and a vinyl printer. So Yeah, that's, that's what uh, I, I think on the podcast I was talking to him about that, or maybe prior to us recording. But yeah, I, I just got to figure it out it, one step at a time oh, at this point. Speaking of the podcast... Uh, AJ just released episode eleven of the yes I did of the off the cuff podcast on all your all your podcast catchers check them out uh, I'm on episode eleven that's why I'm advocating <laughs> so anyway well thank you for the plug uh, how much more time we got well, we're about out of time um, okay if you guys want to start wrapping it up 
Nope, I never wrap it up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to thank our our sponsors, but our main sponsor, Daniel, over at PWNCNC, keeps keeps it real with the CNC game. So check them out, PWNCNC.com. If you're looking for that aftermarket spindle kit, uh, water cooled, air cooled, he's got it. Uh, for ten percent off your order, use promo code Sawdust Nation nine eight one, and uh, that'll also help benefit the podcast. And next up, we want to thank Total Boat for their continued support. Check them out for the best epoxies and uh, their Halcyon and all that other good stuff. So TotalBoat.com for a 10% off promo code. Slide into the Sawdust Nation podcast DMs and we'll hook you up. And we want to thank our affiliates, Makerstock.com. Makerstock.com has the best veneers and acrylic. I buy from their – I buy their acrylic. I, I heavily invest in Makerstock, just heads up. So – uh, but if you want to, if you want ten percent off your initial order, um, please use promo code Sawdust ten. Use promo code Sawdust ten. That'll give you ten percent off your entire initial order at Makerstock.com. And last but not least, we would love to thank Omtech for being our affiliate. So, if you're looking for that laser, get a hold of us. We'll point you in the right direction with an Omtech. All right, folks. So check it out. If you're listening to this podcast and you love what you hear. Shoot, even if you don't love what you hear, head on over uh, to – well, you're, if you're listening on Apple Podcast and you love what you hear, even if you don't love what you hear, go ahead and give us five stars. And we're here for you. So if you don't feel this content is worthy, please let us know what we can do better or what, what you want to hear. We're here for you. We want to answer your questions. We want to address the situations going on in the maker community uh, today. And in the future. So I'm going to kick it on over to Josh, and he's going to let you know how you can get a hold of us. Well, as always, we want to thank AJ from Crafted NJ for stopping in and helping us uh, do this podcast. You can check him out on his page. Give him a follow because you know what? He's making some amazing stuff. You know what? Also hit him up for chats because you know what? He's going to help you out and get you where you need to go. But if you want to hit the podcast up, you can hit us at Sawdust Nation Podcast on Instagram. Uh, you never know who you're going to get, but that's part of the fun. And then we have Nap from Nap's Nutty Works LLC. And, uh, well, hopefully he'll be with us next week. And then we have Nick from MPG Creations, myself, Josh from North Country Woodworking, and we're all available for you online. If we don't uh, get back to you right away, we sure will try to get back to you when we can. If um, that's not something you're into and you don't do social media, go ahead and write us an email. And you can write us an email at sawdustnationpodcast at gmail.com. Send us a voice clip. AJ commonly does that so we can get his voice on here and he'll ask us a question. Um, go ahead and, you know, ask us topic ideas. What's up, man? Actually, I was told by a little uh, birdie that I get put onto the pay no mind list when my uh, when my question gets sent in. You know, it, it kind of gets weighted until like the very end of the episode. And then you guys kind of just like maybe forget about it. It's not forget about it. It's such a good question. We want to make sure it's the last thing people hear. Hey, you know what? The best way to you know be part of the podcast is be a Patreon. You know, if you're a Patreon and you're in the third tier, you get to be part of the podcast. We have people in our chat that are chatting with us, telling us questions, you know, responding to what we're saying, topic ideas, um, correcting if we say something stupid, and uh, just all around, you know, being part of the experience. And you get all the content up front, raw and uncut. You get entries, double entries into all of our giveaways, even our big 100th. They all had double entries. Um, and we also tend to give out gifts throughout the year to our Patreons because we appreciate, you know, them being part of our journey. And uh, now we're part of theirs. So become a Patreon. We appreciate it. And hopefully you will, too. Um, with that, let's go with final words and toss it over to AJ from Crafted and NJ. Just want to say, if uh, you listen to this, I love you. And I uh, hope you guys are doing a great job out there. That's all I got. Nick? <laughs> well, like always, take care of yourselves and each other, folks. And remember, the only thing worse than partying, waking up the next morning and having a <laughs> run on your face, is finding out that it was traced. Josh? <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you for joining us for the 117th episode. Um, it's been a pleasure to have AJ on here. And, uh, well, 
hopefully you can listen to us while you're making coffee in the morning, making breakfast, you know, on your way to work, at work, in the shop, working out. We don't care where you are. We just want to be able to whisper in your ear, hopefully get some chuckles out of you. You learn something. With that, go make some sawdust and sawdust nation out. All right. Bye-bye. Fun fact, what do you call a deaf gynecologist? A lip reader. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>